Welcome to the Adult Foster Care Division's video presentation on diabetes. Caregivers play an important role in the long-term care of residents with diabetes. Diabetes is a lifelong condition that requires constant monitoring and a comprehensive treatment plan. Many residents in long-term care settings living with a diabetes diagnosis require a caregiver's help. Caregivers may need to lend a hand with the medical, emotional, and practical aspects of diabetes. The first step you should take as a caregiver of a diabetes resident is to educate yourself as much as possible on the disease. We hope you find this presentation helpful. In this video presentation, we will discuss the following. Diabetes Fast Facts What Diabetes Is Prediabetes, Diabetes Type 1 and 2 Gestational Diabetes Complications with Diabetes Diabetic Care in Residential Settings Assessment Planning for Residents with Diabetes and Diabetic Emergencies. Let's get started. Diabetes is the eighth leading cause of death in the U.S. and may be underreported. It affects more than 37 million people. In the last 20 years, the number of adults diagnosed with diabetes has more than doubled as the American population has gotten older and more overweight or obese. So what is diabetes? In a nutshell, glucose is your body's main source of energy. It can be produced by your body, but it also comes from the food you eat. Insulin, a hormone produced by the pancreas, is a hormone that assists glucose in entering your cells to be used for energy. When an individual has diabetes, their body doesn't produce enough insulin or doesn't use it properly. Subsequently, glucose stays in their blood and doesn't reach their cells. Most people have heard of type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So, what is the difference? Type 2 diabetes makes up 90% to 95% of all diagnosed cases of diabetes, while type 1 diabetes makes up about 5% to 10%. Let's discuss types 1 and 2 diabetes. If an individual has type 1 diabetes, their pancreas either doesn't make any insulin or produces very little of it. Without insulin, glucose cannot enter their body's cells to be used as energy. This leads to high blood sugar. High blood sugar damages the body and contributes to many of the symptoms and complications of diabetes, which we will discuss later in this video. Type 1 diabetes was formerly known as insulin-dependent or juvenile diabetes, as it typically develops in children, teens, and young adults. However, it can develop at any age. There are several risk factors associated with type 1 diabetes. It is important to note that diet and lifestyle habits don't cause type 1 diabetes. Let's discuss some of these risk factors in greater detail. Family history. Anyone with a parent or sibling with type 1 diabetes has a slightly higher risk of developing the condition. Genetics. Having certain genes increases the risk of developing type 1 diabetes. Geography. The number of people who have type 1 diabetes tends to be higher as you travel away from the equator. Age. Type 1 diabetes can appear at any age, but it appears at two noticeable peaks. The first peak occurs in children between 4 and 7 years old. The second is in children between 10 and 14 years old. Other possible causes include exposure to viruses and other environmental factors. There is no known way to prevent type 1 diabetes. However, researchers are working to stop the condition or to stop cells from being damaged further in people who have just been diagnosed. Since type 1 diabetes has no known cure, treatment focuses on controlling blood sugar levels with insulin. Treatments for type 1 diabetes include taking insulin, counting carbohydrates, fats, and protein, monitoring blood sugar often, eating healthy foods, exercising regularly, and keeping a healthy weight. Before developing type 2 diabetes, most people are pre diabetic. This is when their blood sugar is higher than normal but not high enough yet for a diabetes diagnosis. Prediabetes is very common. 96 million U.S. adults have it, though more than 80% of them don't know they do. The good news is that prediabetes can be reversed. 
Next, let's discuss type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is the most common form of diabetes. About 1 in 10 Americans have the disease. It's the seventh leading cause of death in the U.S. Type 2 diabetes is caused by a problem with how the body regulates and uses glucose as fuel. This chronic condition causes too much sugar to circulate in the blood, which can eventually cause problems with the circulatory, nervous, and immune systems. There are primarily two issues with type 2 diabetes. The pancreas does not produce enough insulin, and the cells do not respond well to insulin, which results in lower blood sugar levels. Type 2 diabetes used to be known as adult-onset diabetes. However, both type 1 and type 2 diabetes can begin during childhood and adulthood. Exactly why individuals develop type 2 diabetes is not known. It is more common in older adults. However, the increase in the number of children with obesity has led to more cases of type 2 diabetes in younger people. Next, we'll discuss some of the risk factors associated with type 2 diabetes. An individual is more likely to develop type 2 diabetes if they are Black, Hispanic, American Indian, Asian American, or Pacific Islander, are older than 45, are overweight, don't exercise, had gestational diabetes while pregnant, have a family history of diabetes, have high blood pressure, have prediabetes, higher than normal blood sugar, though not high enough to be type 2 diabetes. The symptoms of both type 1 and type 2 diabetes are very similar. Some of these symptoms include feeling more thirsty than usual, urinating a lot, bed wetting in children who have never wet the bed during the night, feeling very hungry, losing weight without trying, feeling irritable or having other mood changes, feeling tired and weak, having blurry vision, dry skin, sores that heal slowly, more infections than usual. People who have type 1 diabetes may also have nausea, vomiting, or stomach pains. Type 1 diabetes symptoms can develop in just a few weeks or months and can be severe. The next topic we will discuss is diabetic tests and diagnosis. Blood tests are usually used to diagnose diabetes. Blood tests determine if blood glucose levels are higher than a range that is healthy. Blood tests can also help identify the type of diabetes an individual has. Doctors can also use a variety of other tests to diagnose diabetes and prediabetes. A doctor may recommend different tests depending on whether an individual has symptoms or not, or whether they are pregnant. Individuals can help to prevent type 2 diabetes by maintaining an ideal body weight, exercising regularly, eating a healthy diet, and taking medication. The medication metformin or glucophage offers some additional protection for people with prediabetes. Like type 1 diabetes, once diagnosed with the type 2 diabetes, there's no cure for the disease. However, losing weight, eating well, and exercising can help manage the disease. Individuals with the disease can occasionally return to normal blood sugar levels by eating well, exercising frequently, and losing weight. In some cases, lifestyle changes aren't enough to keep type 2 diabetes under control. There are several oral medications that may help. Insulin therapy may also be recommended. Individuals with type 2 diabetes should aggressively manage other risk factors, such as high blood pressure, high cholesterol and triglycerides, cigarette smoking, and obesity. They should visit an eye doctor and a foot specialist every year to reduce eye and foot complications. Individuals can consider taking low-dose aspirin daily, as this may lower the risk of heart-related complications. The next type of diabetes we will discuss is gestational diabetes. As with other types of diabetes, gestational diabetes affects how your cells use glucose. Gestational diabetes is diagnosed for the first time during pregnancy and results in high blood sugar, which can have an adverse effect on both the health of the mother and the unborn child. By eating well, working out, and, if necessary, taking medication during pregnancy, 
individuals can control gestational diabetes and keep both themselves and their unborn child healthy. Individuals should be tested for changes in blood sugar more frequently if they had gestational diabetes, as they have a higher risk of developing type 2 diabetes. If an individual has gestational diabetes during pregnancy, their blood sugar usually returns to normal level shortly after delivery. Increased thirst and more frequent urination are two potential signs, though they are not always present. As mentioned previously, there are several complications associated with diabetes. Let's discuss some of these complications. Heart and blood vessel disease. Diabetes increases the risk of certain heart and blood vessel issues, such as coronary artery disease, which causes angina, chest pain, heart attacks, strokes, artery narrowing, atherosclerosis, and high blood pressure. Nerve damage, neuropathy. Too much sugar in the blood can damage the walls of the tiny blood vessels, the capillaries that feed the nerves, especially in the legs, this can result in tingling, numbness, burning, or pain that usually starts at the tips of the toes or fingers and spreads upward. If blood sugar is not properly controlled, individuals may eventually lose all feeling in the affected limbs. Men may experience erectile dysfunction as a result of damage to the nerves that control the digestive system. This can result in issues with nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, or constipation. Kidney damage, or nephropathy. Diabetes can harm the kidneys' millions of tiny blood vessels, which prevent waste from entering the blood. Severe harm can result in kidney failure or irreversible end-stage kidney disease. This could require mechanical filtering of the kidneys, called dialysis, or a kidney transplant in order to be treated. Eye damage. Diabetes increases the risk of other serious vision conditions like cataracts and glaucoma. Diabetes can harm the blood vessels in the retina, the part of the eye that detects light, which could result in blindness. Foot damage, untreated cuts and blisters can develop into serious infections that may require toe, foot, or leg removal. Amputation. Nerve damage in the feet or poor blood flow to the feet increase the risk of some foot complications. Skin and mouth conditions. Diabetes may make an individual more vulnerable to bacterial and fungal infections of the skin and mouth, as well as to gum disease and dry mouth. Pregnancy complications. Diabetes increases the risk of diabetic ketoacidosis, diabetic eye problems, or retinopathy, pregnancy-induced high blood pressure, and preeclampsia for the parent, and it also increases the risk of miscarriage, stillbirth, and birth defects when it is not well controlled. We will now discuss the types of diabetic care services provided in residential settings. Many long-term care facilities offer services to help residents manage their diabetes. Residents and their loved ones expect these facilities to provide high-quality care. To provide proper diabetes care, Caregivers must, at the very least, be trained and competent in administering diabetes medications in accordance with physician's orders, encouraging residents to follow self-care practices like physical activity, monitoring blood sugar levels based on the risk factors for hypoglycemia, and providing proper nutrition and or therapeutic diets in accordance with physician's orders. Caregivers who provide diabetic care to residents must be trained on all aspects of diabetes care. Caregivers will need a competency assessment to enable them to administer insulin to individual residents. Records of competency verification should be kept in the caregiver's employee records. Resident care plans and assessment plans outline everything that caregivers need to know so they can best meet the resident's needs. Plans should be uniquely tailored to each resident. Care plans and or assessment plans for residents with diabetes may include end-of-life care. If a resident becomes terminally ill, a plan to monitor their blood sugar closely to prevent or reduce complications from diabetes may be identified in their assessment plan. 
foot checks. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, recommends that individuals with diabetes check their feet every day for redness or other injuries. Diabetic residents often suffer from numbness or nerve damage in their feet, putting them at risk of bed sores. In a residential setting, caregivers may have to perform these checks on the resident's behalf. These checks should be indicated in a resident's assessment plan. Protocol for falls. Hypoglycemic residents have a higher risk of falling. Low blood sugar can cause diabetic residents to be off balance, meaning they can fall more easily. Fall prevention strategies should be outlined in a resident's assessment plan. Hygiene monitoring. Caregivers may check diabetic residents with urinary incontinence on a regular basis to ensure they receive hygiene assistance, for example, assistance with changing diapers. Otherwise, urine and other waste materials can cause infection if a wound is present or make the skin more prone to damage. This care need should be identified in a resident's care plan and or assessment plan. Diabetic wound care. Proper wound care treatment enables residents with diabetes to avoid serious complications that dramatically affect their quality of life. Instructions for cleaning wounds, bandaging wounds, and changing dressings per physician's orders may also be indicated in a resident's care plan and or assessment plan. Blood sugar that is too low or extremely high can quickly result in unconsciousness and even death. Caregivers must be aware of both condition symptoms and how to react. Hypoglycemia, also known as insulin reaction or insulin shock, is a condition where the blood sugar level is too low. It can be brought on by using too much insulin or oral medication, exercising too much, eating too little, or drinking alcohol. The following symptoms of low blood sugar occur suddenly and without warning. Shaking, nervousness, feeling sweaty and cold, pale, clammy skin feeling weak, tired, and drowsy, sudden hunger, blurred or double vision, tingling of hands, lips, or tongue, confusion, personality change, slurred speech, loss of consciousness, dizziness, staggering walk, nausea and headache, fast heartbeat, itching. Any diabetic who suddenly exhibits symptoms of hypoglycemia requires immediate medical attention, as low blood sugar can be very dangerous for diabetics, especially for those who are elderly and have developmental disabilities. To quickly treat hypoglycemia, the diabetic could do any of the following. Drink a sweet drink such as sweetened coffee or tea, orange juice, or soda. Eat sugar, corn syrup, or candy, or take glucose tablets. Symptoms of hypoglycemia should be reported to a licensed medical professional immediately. Hyperglycemia is a condition in which there is an excessive amount of sugar in the blood. This condition can be brought on by infections, illnesses, stress, accidents, not enough insulin, insufficient exercise, or eating an excessive amount of food. The following symptoms of high blood sugar occur gradually and worsen over time. Extreme thirst, hunger, rapid weight loss, frequent urination, change in vision, dry skin and mouth, fatigue, drowsiness, nausea, fruity smelling breath, very deep, gasping breath, and unconsciousness. Fruity breath, deep gasping breathing, and unconsciousness are emergency symptoms. Caregivers should call 911 or access emergency medical care at once, any of the first seven symptoms just mentioned should be reported to a licensed medical provider immediately. Let's discuss some suggestions for diabetes best practices in residential settings. Create a diabetes policy. Along with their care plan and or assessment plan, create a detailed diabetes care plan agreed upon with the resident, their responsible person, and their primary care physician. Designate at least one staff member to be a diabetes champion or diabetes key worker. This individual will attend locally recognized accredited training on diabetes. Arrange for annual training for caregivers by licensed medical staff members who are experts in diabetes. 
Thank you for watching our video presentation on Introduction to Diabetes. As always, resident safety is our top priority.